think about mistakes, I'd also think about you know the cons. And we're talking the pros and cons of, of working with Amazon Web Services. What would a con be? And, and specifically, uh, vendor lock-in. Is that something people should be really concerned with with AWS, or is that not not such a worry? So you know, I think yes and no. Um, vendor lock-in is a potential issue for all kinds of technologies. <coughs> Every different cloud provider. And as well as non-cloud technologies. But I think the answer in all of those cases is sort of a, a risk-reward approach. In other words, so if, if Amazon has something that you need and others don't, and, and those services can benefit you, it may well be worth uh, committing yourself and locking yourself into those services. You know, just be aware up front that if you do need to move sometime down the road, you're, you're going to have to take, take on some additional costs yourself. But I tend to not, you know, warn people uh, overly on the lock-in issue. Just, just to come into it with eyes wide open instead. What, what about your post? I mean, I'm thinking about cons, and I'm thinking about what if people are shopping around. You talked about AWS versus Google Compute, cost-wise. Are, are they number two in your eyes? If, if someone were going to shop around. You know, that, that's really tough, actually. So I'm sort of a believer in having a portfolio of clouds. And I think many people are, are following this model. Um, people may use Amazon and Google, but I, but I don't think it's really down to just those two. I think it's more looking at your applications, not even just as, as an entire portfolio, um, and picking the average cloud or, or the cloud that best meets those applications on average. I think it's looking at your whole portfolio of applications and picking the right cloud for each. I mean, you can get a little carried away with that, but you know, if you start looking, you can uh, you'll you'll find okay, Amazon. They're not the cheapest cloud, and they're not the fastest cloud, and their performance is not the most consistent. But then again, Amazon has by far the most services. Uh, they have an incredible developer ecosystem. You know, so so if you're developing native cloud applications, you know, you're probably going to really want to take a look at Amazon and may, maybe stick with them. Um, but if you're an enterprise and you have a variety of applications and you want you want an environment where you can have dedicated hardware mixed in with virtual in infrastructure, virtual servers, and, and so on. There's others to choose from. You know, you could look at an internet or a soft layer. Um, so I don't think there is one cloud. You know, that that beats them all. Amazon has tremendous advantages, and and so do some others. Jeremy, your sense of either cons or, and I know I'm asking a two-part question, who, who do you think of number two? If, if someone does get fed up with Amazon Web Services or they simply want to spread around their business, who do you think so of it as, as a logical I really wanna, choice? I, I don't really want to say that there's a number two. Okay. I want to say that cloud provider has its own set of features that it's good at and bad at. Very right. similar. Uh, and it's really, it's up to you, you know, which one serves your needs best. Netflix yeah. uses Amazon because it serves our needs best. It has the features that we need to do what we need to do. It has the capacity that we need to do what we need to do. Right. Uh, but, you know, if I were starting from scratch with a new company or something, the first thing I would say is try to build so that you can run on any cloud, right? Don't tr try to do that up until the point where you need one of those features that only one of them offers. And ideally, you know, if you have one app that needs some set of features and a different app that needs others, if you can run each app on the appropriate cloud, you're sitting in a much better position. Right. And we're actually seeing large companies take that approach right now, Jeremy. So when we talk to CIOs at companies, mm -hmm. they're moving 100 or 1,000 systems onto the cloud over the next few years. They look on the selection of cloud vendor like they look on the development tools. Like, we can do this one in Java, we can do this one in Ruby. And they're very agnostic. And they really yeah. think that people are going to take exactly that approach where... This stuff is great. We're going to use, you know, a Redshift and S3. This one over here, it needs GCE or SoftLayer. And one of the things that no one's mentioned yet is also is, is the audit trails. So there are companies like SoftLayer that provide all the data you need to understand where your data is actually going and who's got access to stuff. And Amazon's scrambling to catch up here. IBM's acquisition of SoftLayer uh, will improve that. I know that Dell are working on a lot of tools to help you comply with whatever regulations your business is operating under. Jeremy, did you want to say a, a possible con or downside to working with AWS? Is there something that, that oh gosh, I, w I wish they did this, but they don't do this? <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> All right, oh. okay. You're, you're a satisfied customer. 
I mean, we are super happy with Amazon, right? Yeah. If we weren't, we wouldn't. Sure. But, you know, I mean, everybody has their problems, right? There's small, minor, you know, technical things here and there where we right. work with them and they work with us. And, uh, you know, they have, I guess the biggest downside is that we're not their only customer. So right. sometimes we have something that's very high priority for us, uh, but it's just us. So sometimes that'll take a back seat. But you're going to get that with any cloud provider, right? right. It's, you're not necessarily their biggest or only customer. So I think that's probably the biggest the biggest downside, right, is, is since they're the biggest, that makes us even that much smaller of a customer. Right. Bernard, a, a, a downside or a con of working with AWS? Well, um, uh, you know, I, I think um, a lot of companies, a lot of users are, are used to, even if they're a, you know, a good-sized company, they're, they're used to a lot of handholding from their vendors. Mm -hmm. And um, Amazon tends to have much more of a um, hands-off approach. It's kind of like here's all the services, here's the documentation, um, and you know there's much less of the you know sort of we're gonna so for example they really have a very limited amount of professional services and so forth. So you know, if you're a company that sort of says, "Gosh, I don't really know this stuff. I need help," probably Amazon's going to say. We're going to look to a partner to help you with that. So, for example, so maybe direct, less direct vendor interaction. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, it's very difficult if you, if you are an organization used to custom negotiating contracts, custom negotiating pricing, you know, uh, striking a deal and then putting it into your procurement department to grind uh, the vendor. That's very difficult to do with Amazon. They have a much more Structured sort of here's how it is, here's our terms and conditions, here's our pricing, here's you know here's the way it is. So uh, you know that's something you should be aware of. Interesting. Not a lot of hand holding. 